are listening to Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And I am super excited to welcome Shannon McGraw to the show. And I'm going to do a quick bio on her. I say quick. This is not going to be quick. She has an incredible bio. But I want to tell our listeners a little bit about you before I totally welcome you on here. So Shannon McGraw was born in Wichita Falls, Texas, and was raised in Sherman, Texas, with an undergrad degree in journalism and public relations from Stephen F. Austin State University and a master's in fine arts from the University of Houston. She's a single mom with two boys in college, both named, let's see, Ryan and Seth. I love those names, by the way. It has been said that the best thing about hitting bottom is when we, when we do, we have no place else to go but up. Such was the case with Shannon McGraw. At the age of 27, she found herself at the bottom of a life that was no longer tolerable. With no place to turn, she found faith and peace. It was the beginning of a love story that continued continues to unfold day by day. Shannon McGraw is a mental health peer support specialist and an incest rape survivor and cancer survivor. She is the author of Exposed and Redeemed and founder of Hopeful Hearts Ministry of 501c3. I love it, Shannon. Shannon has spoken across the United States and internationally addressing the realities and effects of abuse in our culture and the graces faith provides for one's healing journey. Shannon was honored with the Family Time Women of Achievement Award for Women's Advocate and 2014. She was CBS Houston's featured author and has been a featured columnist with ChooseNowMinistries.com, Lifestyle and Charity Magazine, and many more. Shannon now travels the country and the world, not only helping survivors of abuse, but men and women in all types of business recognize their stuck points. Her desire is to be a voice for all and hopefully encourage everyone, regardless of age, gender, or race, to overcome their past setbacks in an effort not to just survive, but to thrive. I love it, Shannon. I love that bio. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is, I love being able to be on here with you, Jennifer. I know we planned this before COVID, but now after COVID, this is I, I'm loving doing this. It gives me some kind of normalcy, even though my surroundings may not be, you know, I'm not with you as Absolutely. I should be. I yes, guess. we talked about that. We're learning to navigate and go about our business the best that we can, you know. And I love mm-hmm. the thing I talk about this podcast. I love doing is just because the great thing about it is we get to shine people and I love the empowerment and the motivation and the positivity and in a time like this it's almost like we need this kind of stuff you know so it's fun to be able to get people yeah. like you on here and have these fun conversations and just hopefully we're empowering people you know I hope so I think that your energy is infectious so it's good to have today thank you for sure. thank you well, I'm excited to have <laughs> you so I want to jump on in here really quick and I want to talk a little bit about what you do your bio is incredible it talks a lot so maybe tell us a little bit more about you like how all this kind of came about you share with us what you want our audience to know and um, we're gonna like, just kind of dive in here and talk okay absolutely I um, you know, as my bio says, I am a incest survivor and rape survivor from high school and then again in college. And I got married at a very young age, right after I graduated college. And um, it was pretty much in my mid 20s, late 20s that I, you know, I had had my oldest child at the age of 25. And then the second, I was 27 years old. And I still had all this pent up anger and rage and just everything from all of my past, from all the different types of abuses that I had been through. And I realized with kids, um, you know, survivors tend to have a control issue. Many of us have control issues for many reasons, but survivors specifically need to feel like they have some sense of control in their life, that no one is going to take advantage of them again, or, you know, do something like that to them again. And so I had children, and we all know if you have children, uh, you don't really have much control of them, especially as toddlers. Um, You're the parent, but I, so my oldest was just, um, he was a a little boy who, you know, was a hard-willed, you know, hard-headed, you know, strong-willed child. And it just sent me over my edge. Um, I didn't know what to do with him. And it, it, it truly brought up just so much within me. And I recognized the way I was responding to my children was not the person I wanted to be. Um, they were toddlers. And yet I was taking it personally as if whatever they were doing 
as normal toddlers would do was against me. And so I, um, you know, I was, I was abusive in many ways. I mean, I actually caught myself. I shouldn't say that, but I, I caught myself kind of having that behavior and I stopped and I just, I know there's a moment that I write about and expose where my oldest, it was two and a half years old. He was training, you know, to go potty and he did number two everywhere. I'm sure every mother can relate to this. This is not just something that I'm the only one that went through, right? But because of everything else I had been through, that happened in that in that moment, this sense of anger and rage at this two and a half year old for literally painting. He took his feces and painted it all over the bathroom. And I was furious. I was just furious. And the way I wanted to go shove his underwear in his face like he was a dog. I didn't. That's why I said I can't say it was necessarily abusive, but I wanted to. And it was just that fact that stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, who am I? What's going on? And that sent me to where I literally laid face down flat on the floor and I cried out to God. You know, at this point, I can't say I was very faithful. I didn't think that I was worthy of much of anything. I'd had so much that happened in my life. And I just cried out and was like, if you have something for my life, then change it and do something with it because I don't want to be this person anymore. And so long story short, from that point forward, like I knew God, God met me that day and I knew him and I felt him and I wanted to not go back to that person, to that person that was filled with that anger and rage. And I began to go into intensive therapy, you know, doing EMDR, doing everything I could to truly go through the pain. I had to feel it. I had to go through it. I had to acknowledge it and to go on my healing journey. And I began to become a youth minister and began to speak about my story. And the more I spoke and then was asked to speak all over everywhere to youth, the adults were coming up to me telling me that they related. They related to what I'd been through, but they had never told anybody. And so that's what really hit me is that how many of us have been through different childhood abuses, not just sexual, but also physical or neglect or just even emotional abuse, but never really dealt with it. And that's where Hopeful Hearts came around. I love this. Well, and I'm just a quick next show. Yeah, no, I love it. And your story is, it's powerful and incredible. And what's so interesting, a couple points here that I was going to say is when you were talking about your son, you know, as a parent, we've all had these moments where, you know, like, yes. So on that level, I think many parents could relate with you on those, on these issues of, you know, even without having prior baggage coming to the table because as parents you know you're you know, we go through a lot of different things so I think on that level but your story is so I, I think your story is just incredible and in what you've done and accomplished and really you know when you were talking about that moment where you decided you wanted to change we always talk about these like pivotal moments that we have you know people make change when they are either pushed by pain or pulled by a longing you know and most of the time I would say it's when people get pinned against a wall you know like when they finally get pinned against a wall and enough is enough they decide I'm going to make a change and for everybody that's different you know, some people, it's it's something like that. Some people, it's a financial situation. Some people, it's their health. But that's when people ultimately make change is when they, you know, get pinned against a wall and they make a decision to do that. Because until you make that decision, nothing changes, right? Right. You're sure. And then that's what I've always helped with people is that, you know, the only person that can change you is you. You can't change anybody else. You can't make anybody else's behavior, reactions, or responses be any different. You're the only one in control. Of, of how you are, how you're going to react, how you're going to respond. And even though like all this happened in my past, yes, it affects me. And yes, it will always be a part of my life, but it's my choice to, like I said, I had to acknowledge it and I had to go through the pain to get beyond it and to say, I'm not going to allow it to bring me down anymore. I'm not going to allow it to control my life and so that's a decision and we have to be very intentional about our decisions on a daily basis i agree with you 100 percent. i love it I, I would say that's about being mindful it's it's really being aware of your your thought patterns and the things that are coming up because i always talk about sabotaging behavior so we all have them you know and they're they're 
develop from all these things that have happened to us over this early years of our life as a child. And, you know, we always talk about, I'm reading in my social, I'm taking the social psychology class right now, which is really interesting given what we're going through with this whole pandemic thing right now. Oh, and yeah. it's so crazy because they're, they're talking a lot about that, about these beliefs that we have and, you know, and, and these ideas, how we see something and we'll create like our own ideas of what these events looked like for us. And I always joke and say, if you don't, you know, believe all this stuff, ask your kids how things went down when they were children, because you'll get different answers. You know, you'll get completely different stories of what happened. But how do we perceive these events? They're in our head and they're stored. And no matter what you do, they're not going to leave. So the idea here is, is that we have to learn to be mindful to get around them. So I love that you're doing that and you're aware of it. You're admitting that, no, these aren't going to go away. But I'm being conscientious and aware of these thought patterns so that I can change my life and those around me. So tell us a little bit about your coaching, like what you're doing now with all of that. Tell us how that's going down. Um, You know, I started on the mental health peer support specialist. So through Hopeful Hearts, we do peer support, one-on-one therapy, um, you know, with survivors. But on an offshoot of that, I started helping those um, on many different situations, men that are in business that are trying to, you know, work through situations that they feel stuck in their life, in their career, in their family life, and, um, you know, trying to work them through these processes of, you know, a lot of times, not just men, but we all can reach an age where we're like, I'm not really where I thought I was going to be, and where do I want to be, you know, for the next 40, 50 years of my life. Um, And so I began to work with people one-on-one outside of Hopeful Hearts as well, what I'm really excited about is I just um, started with a company. I just got hired on last week to work with an entire company and all of their employees as their in-house coach. So uh, this is a new endeavor for me to take on that many. Um, but I'm, I'm just really excited to think and, and kind of pleased with this owner. It's a small company, but he, he takes mental health seriously. And he wanted to provide for his employees you know, an outlet to be able to discuss whatever's going on, um, whether it be with home or with business and, and to be able to work forward. So that's kind of what I'm doing in that realm right now. Congratulations. And you're writing, are you, you're writing a book too right now. Am I correct? Another one? I, I am. I've written it. I am kind of editing and updating a little bit now that we're in this situation. And I think it pertains. And so before I actually get it published, I thought this was a good time to actually, uh, write something about the situation that the entire world is in. It's called Awake My Soul. And it's a step-by-step um, process uh, to understand letting go and letting God. And it's based off of Ephesians, the, um, the Bible, Ephesians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 through 20. So, um, and it's about truly bringing out of the darkness, like what maybe has been done to you in your past, uh, your fears, the things that bring you anxiety, you know, bringing it from the darkness into the light and being able to let go of that control. I love it. When's the book coming out then? Uh, plan, I guess. End of May. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. How long have you been working on this? It seems like it's not been that long. You've been moving. No, I wrote it right before I got divorced. I've been okay. divorced for over a year, so it was okay. kind of put on hold. Gotcha. And so it was one of those I came back to. Gotcha. Well, you know, better late than never, right? That's what they say. That's anyway. right. You've already got some out there, so this isn't your first rodeo for sure. You've done this, so it's all right. good. It's all right. good. Congratulations. That's awesome. So congratulations. Thank you. So do you want to talk a little bit about your charity? Tell us a little bit about that. Like you mentioned you talked a little bit about but tell us what you're doing with that, and um, so we can get that out right. to our audience as well. Absolutely. Hopeful Hearts Ministry, we aid in the long-term recovery of survivors of abuse. So as I mentioned, we work one-on-one and in different programs, group programs, but we work with women and men, um, adult women and men, who have suffered some form of abuse in their past. And and for many, it could be multiple abuses. Uh, Emotional abuse is attached to most every other abuse. Um, but mental, physical, sexual, emotional abuse. And um, our median age of somebody that tends to come to us for peer support is somebody like 55 years of age. Okay. And what happens is, is 
uh, I've noticed for our generation, for generations ahead of me, um, of us, um, even some of the, like the, you know, 30 somethings right now, for whatever reason, if, if you've been abused in your past, especially at home, most abuse, 90% happens within the family, mm -hmm. um, whether it's in your nucleus of the family or a family member, you know, cousin, uncle, or neighbor. And it doesn't ever get reported. It doesn't get talked about. Maybe you never tell anybody. And you, whether or not you went to therapy as a child or not, it just kind of gets worked through and worked over. And then you, it, you just shove it away. And it comes back when you have children at the same age or you have grandchildren at the same age or something, some life change happens or something such as this and you're stuck by yourself with nothing but your brain and your mind to go back over many things. And it all starts to bubble up. And um, so we're a place that you can come to and say, I just need to talk about this. I don't know what direction I want to go. I don't know what I need to do. But we're here to let you know you're not alone. Uh, we're, meant, you know, we're certified in this peer support. Uh, many of us, or all of us, have been through some form of abuse. And uh, we offer empowerment programs. We do just breathe and doing yoga. And right now on Facebook, if you go to Hopeful Hearts Ministry on Facebook, we are offering these online for everybody. So it's for everybody. I don't, you don't have to have been through some major trauma in your life. Right now, we're all dealing with a trauma, essentially. Right. And right. so it's so good to have, like, Just Breathe, which is breathing techniques, you know, to help mm -hmm. with anxiety and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's wonderful. No, yes, and you're right. I feel like I was talking to someone the other day, and I was saying that, yeah, I feel like we have been traumatized. You know, like, I talk about this all the time because when I was going through my health crisis, I could never in that, when I was right in the middle of that, I could never see past the moment that I was in. Like I never could see the next day. I was so sick and in pain all the time that if somebody would ask me on Monday what I was doing on Friday, I couldn't really give them an, them an answer because I couldn't see past Monday. And I swore when I came out of that, that I never wanted to enter that phase in my life again. And then we got into this quarantine thing and those emotions surfaced back up again and I was telling somebody that for me it felt almost like that same time that I was in that mess for four years of my life you know and so when you talk about that being traumatized I agree with you because I think for many of us that is what we've been feeling you know and I think now we're all kind of coming to that conclusion where we're learning to just navigate you know we've gotten past the whole the freaking out stage and we're just learning to to move about I say move about the cabin right we're just doing what right. we do so well, everybody's learning about themselves, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're so used, I, I'll even admit it for myself, we're so used to being able to be busy, right? and, you know, we might need time, and we think, oh, I've been at home watching Netflix for a day. Well, okay, sometimes we might allow that, but now here we're 30-something days in, right, and you know, you don't have the outlet to go and, and uh, you know, fill up space. Right. So now you're just sitting here, and, and it does. It, it, it makes you look at yourself. Who am I? How do I react to things? How do I respond to things? Like, you can't hide from yourself anymore. And so there's a lot that, that need you, that need this podcast, that need the books, they need whatever. This is a great time to really start self-caring and, and improving upon who we are. I agree, 100%. All right, so I have some fun questions for you here. We're gonna, we'll start turning this fun now for you. So what do you okay, love? Good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So what do you love most about what you get to do? What's the best part of this? Oh, I love people. <laughs> um, I love that how we're all different. Um, I love getting to know different people, their idiosyncrasies, like the things that make them tick. And um, just different aspects of their life, um, especially with life coaching. You know, I've worked with people in, in Massachusetts and Connecticut and in New Jersey, Washington State. And just in, in, even in different states, it's like just the way that they do things or um, it's just different. And I, I just find that so fascinating. Um, it's just people. I just love people. And I have a heart for people in general. Um to want to, to really be the best that they can be. That's awesome. I love yeah. it. So um, 
What do you like to do for fun? When you're not coaching and doing your charity and all that <laughs> other motivating, empowering, and writing books and speaking. Right. I can, you know, I wonder how honest I could be in that answer. I have a new boyfriend that I just love to death. That's, that's wonderful. Um, that's cool. <laughs> I love being with him, like, you know, just hanging out and talking. And uh, some, like, COVID fun, right, is going for walks. Yes, yes. You know, we try to have a date night, so we'll go pick up whatever you can pick up at, you know, a takeout or whatever. Right, right. And we'll do, um, you know tailgate somewhere or whatever um so that's fun right now that's awesome I will tell you that when you know with all the kids we have a lot of kids here and so they'll do like theme nights for dinner and we're gonna do like a um you know a talent show and that kind of thing but outside of COVID what I like to do for fun I love to travel um I love to read I love to do stuff like that. But really, I will say I'm so blessed. Um, I'm, you know, I speak a lot. I speak at different conferences and for different retreats. I enjoy what I do. What I do is what is my fun. I mean, I, I'm blessed. That's awesome. Awesome. Any good books that you recommend besides your awesome books? Any other like authors or books <laughs> that you really love? You know, it's funny. Okay, so I am going to mention this. So right now we have a Facebook group that's called um, Lockdown Ladies Get Real. So if you're a female and you want to join something that's just really, we've got, it can be funny, but you could also just be like, today's a really hard day and, and be able to be honest and real about where you are at this moment. But so yesterday I was looking for books and I put out there like, give me some great books, you know. I will tell you that my favorite author is Jodi Picoult. Um, I love, you know, she did, um, now I'm not going to be able to think of the name of her books. I've read almost all her books, but like um, something like A Moment in Her Shoes or Walking in Her Shoes or something. And anyway, but she's, she's amazing. Um, I love Leanne Moriarty. Is that how you say the name? I love all her books. Um, Kristen Hanna, all her books. So I love, 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 love treats. This is what I'm reading right now. What is that? Have y'all read the Yaya Sisterhood? And this is the Little Altars Everywhere. Oh, I've not seen that They're one. Great books. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. No, and I think reading is so important. I talk about that, like being the, like, if I was going to tell somebody to do anything to improve their mental health, I would say read. I would say find a good inspirational book and read. Because, you know, one of the things for me, and I don't know if you're like this, but what I notice is that whenever I'm not reading, my creativity goes away. Like, it dries up. Right. And I found that even, like, when we were in the beginning of this whole lockdown thing, like, for two weeks, I was glued to the news. I mean, it was like every day I'd pull my Yahoo up. And, like, now I just don't even open that. Like, because I couldn't figure out, I'm like, I'm looking at this every day, and like, no creativity is coming to my mind, and then I recognize, oh, hello, you're like spending way too much time in that media, get out, <laughs> so I tell everybody all the time, you no have doubt. to have a good book, or listen to a great audio book, whatever it is that's going to move you, but it needs to be right. something powerful that's going to right. inspire you, motivate you, and get you, make you want to level right. up and be better, so I love that. Well, I will say that for a long time I had been reading, you know, motivational books, but there's moments like now that it's like I have to feel like I'm getting away, so that's why yeah. I'm reading, you know, other things. But I will, you mentioned my book, so I'm going to mention Yes, mention your book for us. So, and um, it's the beginning of my life journey, and then Redeem, and that's my ex on there. So since then, things have happened. I do need to write the third book, but... Um, and this is also an audible as well. Okay. So if you just don't like to read, you can find exposed and yeah. read that. So. I'm, I'm the book reader. I can't do audible because I, I multitask and then I don't pay attention. It's like, I hear people say that all the time. They're like, I'll just put my audible on and then I'm going to, but then I start, I start talking to my kids or talking to the dog or something. And I'm like, no, I have to sit down with the book and just read the paper, you know, and that way if I want to highlight something, I can or earmark it, you know, I totally can. So I don't even like Kindle. I want to be able to like hold the book and yeah, yeah you want to open it up. It's kind of like having the paper calendar, you know, I just learned how to start putting like appointments in my iCalendar and stuff. I still can't figure out how to totally merge Google with iCalendar. I'm like, I'm getting that figured out. But <laughs> I had a paper calendar for years. Like I have always had a paper calendar because I like to have things right in front of me, you know, on paper, like right there. My kids are uh -huh. like, what's wrong with you, mom? <laughs> yeah. I like technology, you know? Yeah. All right. So a few more fun questions. Morning or night person? 
morning. Morning. All right. I would say morning. morning. Yeah. Dog or cat? A little both, but little more both? morning than anything. Yeah. Dog or cat person? Dog, for sure. Dog. 100%. All right. What's yeah. your favorite food? Uh, Tex Mex. For, yeah, Tex Mex. Queso. Yep. That's good. Are you from Texas, right? See, Texas people, yeah. we, we say we say Mexican food. Last, <laughs> well, well, I say Mexican, but I thought to myself, it's not really Mexican. No, it's food, Tex-Mex. But, Mexican food. but if, you Tex-Mex, grew, yeah. if you grew up in Texas, I mean, the chances are you're going to like Tex-Mex, you know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I'm like, what do I want to eat? Fajitas, chips, and salsa. Yeah. That's my food. That's my jam, yeah. right? My, my food jam. Right. All right. Are you a, a winner or a summer person? Summer, hundred percent beach. If that's what you're about to ask, I would have said that. Yeah, where would you want to go to the beach? That's, I was thinking about that the other day. My daughter asked the question: If you could go anywhere right now, like where would you go? And I'm like, well, I really want to go to France and Germany, but oh, I can't pass up a beach. <laughs> I don't even care where. I just right go now, to a beach. I would love a beach. A- absolutely, I want a beach right now. That's what I want. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, a couple more questions. So, who would you say has been your greatest influencers? Mm. That's a really great question. Um, so I, I feel like we could be so trite or normal and, and or whatever. My grandmother, who since passed away many years ago, she was a huge influencer for me. Um, she did. I mean, she was gosh ninety five when she passed away, which was like almost ten years ago. So. Um, she was like the first woman that went to uh, Austin College that in, in Sherman, Texas. But before it was Austin College, it was called Kid Key. And uh, not many women, you know, went to college at that time. And um, she just she just did so much. And she was never concerned about what other people thought about her. And I wish I could say that I have that as much as she does because I don't. I, I do tend to care probably more than I should. Um that she was just very strong in who she was and confident in who she was. And that was a huge influence for me. Um, I, I love to write and writing has always been my thing. And, and growing up, <laughs> I read BC Andrews. I don't know if y'all know. I, that is. Yes, I do. Uh, Flowers in the Attic, yep. which if you think back on it, was like a horrible thing for a young girl to read. <laughs> considering yeah. the storyline. Right. But uh, she was a huge influencer for me just in that and being able to write something that takes you away. And um, so when I do try to write even about my own story, I write as maybe I like a movie, like you would maybe try to picture it, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that's probably I, I, I could go on and on, I'm sure. with others, Right, but. right. I love it. Well, this has been awesome. So if our listeners wanted to find you, Shannon, you mentioned your books, which is wonderful. Thank you for doing that. But if our listeners wanted to come find you, learn a little bit more about you, where do they need to go to see all this? Sure. Uh, hopefulheartsministry.org. Okay. Or shannonmcgraw.com. I have two different websites. Um, and then on Facebook, they can find me, Shannon M. McGraw, on Facebook, or Hopeful Hearts Ministry, just one or the one or the other. And I do implore for all of y'all to join us on Lockdown Ladies Get Real as well. I love that. And I'm in that group, so I do catch some of the stuff that you're putting in your yeah. videos and stuff. I get in there, and uh, when I when I can navigate through Facebook, I, that snooze button has become a really good function on my Facebook feed. <laughs> I'm like, well, how many people can we snooze out of there today? So when I filter through all of that and I see some of your stuff, I do get in there. So, yes, it is a great page. There's women and, from all over the world. Yeah. Too. I just want to point that out there. That's and awesome. that, That's what's really cool about the page. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so any last-minute little nuggets of wisdom you want to toss out there at our audience real quick before I uh, wrap this up? I just, you know what, I want to say, and you mentioned this a little bit earlier, you know, that you could only focus on today when you were going through your other situation. Um, You know, we're all forced in that situation right now. We we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or a month from now. And so in everything, I know that many can feel like I've had so much taken away from me at this moment. I can't do anything. Be intentional about what you have around you. Be intentional with what you're doing with your family. Be intentional with what you're doing with if you have a career or if you're a stay-at-home mom or if you're, you know, having to homeschool the kids. 
just, you know, wake up and make today something that is good for you and just set that intention. Every day will have a blessing. And I just want to encourage you in that. And if you do ever need somebody to just vent to, that's what we're here for at Hopeful Hearts Ministry. So. I love that, Shannon. Thank you for giving us that information. It's wonderful. And good words there. Good wisdom. I like it. I like it. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. So sit tight thank for just a minute. minute. Yeah, sit tight. Um, I do want to tell our listeners real quick, if you love our show, please give us a rating both on Facebook and YouTube and iTunes and all of those places, wherever you can check us out. We can't do this without you. And with that, I'm going to wrap up with our mantra, but I do want to tell Shannon, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate you and you guys check her out. And Shannon, we'll be sure when we post this, we will have all your contact information in there so that if anybody wants to come check you out they can absolutely do that all right thank you Jennifer thank you for the opportunity yeah and with that let's do our mantra real quick it's a great day to be brave you might as well start now you have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide let today be that day rise up be amazing be you do you all right you guys take care be safe and be kind to one another we'll see you next time Uh